have a stealth nation. Let's make welcome our matriarch to the January 2024 Days of Glory Conference. Blessed is she who comes in the name of the Lord. and you didn't die how did you even feed in 2023 how did you pay the bills thank him for preservation for provision and you need to do I want law we honor you tonight thank you Jesus our God if not for you we thank you tonight for 2023 we are grateful thank you for 2024 thank you thank you for this house thank you for this ministry Thank you for the father and the mother of this house. Thank you for the oil, the graces. God, see what you have done with their lives. Thank you. Thank you. We are grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you for every leader. Thank you for every man, every woman. Thank you for the children. Thank you for the young ones. Thank you for every car you bought. Thank you for every marriage. Thank you for every baby you sent. Thank you for the prayers you did not answer. Thank you. Oh God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for 2024. Thank you for giant strides. Thank you in advance. Oh God, we thank you. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship. Oh, glorious God. Oh.
you told me to tell this house that in 2024 you will gladden their hearts. I have thanked you on their behalf. And I pray that this word will be fulfilled in their lives. Things that will make them rejoice. God, as you have promised, as you told me, you will do for them. They will have multiple reasons to thank you. And as we break the bread of life again tonight, in continuation of what your servant shared with us, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will reveal the mind of God to us. Each of us will be lifted. We give you the glory. In the name of Jesus, we have thanked you. When we talk about giant strike, because I'm a trained teacher, so let me break it down a little. Reverend, you bless me. Of course, you know that I record it. It's one of the things I use in the course of the year. You're a blessing. God will preserve you. When we mention the word giant, what does it mean? Colossus, mammoth, massive, enormous, gigantic, huge, very big, very large, great, humongous, vast, elephantine, super duper, titanic. So when your father and the Lord came to tell you that the seven days of glory this year, we're looking at giant strides, taking giant strides. This is the pictorial image. When we talk about strides, what does that mean? Walk or walking with long, decisive steps in a specified direction. So it's not aimless walking. It's not just gallifanting around. It's vast. It's gigantic. It's titanic. It's big. But walking with long, decisive steps in a specified direction. Strides. What does that mean? Large steps to make headway, to gain ground, to progress, advance, to proceed, to get ahead, and to get there. I have released these words prophetically into the atmosphere. They are married to you in the name of Jesus. Remember, amen is the acceptance of a divine verdict. These words that I'm releasing into the because that's one of the ways by which you get the anointing. These words that I'm releasing into the air will be married to your destiny. Yeah. I want to look at five areas of your life where you must take gigantic and titanic and very large steps and strides in 2024. 2024 is a, is a vast and fast year. Vast and fast year. Some people will be left behind. Some people will become carcasses. By words and proverbs. It's going to be a vast year. So some things will be lost. And it's also going to be a fast year. Before you realize that, oh, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. So you must be very, very intentional about 2024. It's not a year in which you will be playing around. In fact, get ready to lose some friends in 2024. Because where you are going, those strides, strides will be too fast for some friends. Too expansive. The gap will be a lot. They will not be able to match up. They will not be able to cope. 
And you do not have to wait for them. Keep going. Those that should catch up will come. But some people must drop off at some bus stops. Let me remind you that it was good that Opa did not go with Naomi and Ruth to Bethlehem Judah. Because there was only one Boaz. And according to Bible culture, particularly the Jewish culture, remember in Genesis, Laban said, we cannot give the last child, the second child, before. Remember 1 Samuel chapter 1, the Bible was talking about a man, Elkanah, who had two wives. The name of one was, because the Bible is a book of order. God is a God of order. The name of one was Anna. So Anna was the first wife. And the other, Penina. Remember also in the book of Ruth, Opa's name was mentioned first. So, if she had followed to Bethlehem, Judah, she would have been the first to marry. So, when some people drop off, don't resurrect what God is killing. Let them go. Be very intentional. Be a bit selfish in 2024. When it comes to your destiny. Where you are going cannot contain some people. If you take some people along and you show them how your bread is buttered, they will steal the bakery. Yeah. Wisdom. That's what Reverend ended with. Wisdom. Hear it now. I'm speaking to you as a mother. Hear it now. Know the difference between Peter and Judas. There is one you will pray for that will repent. There is one. Forget it. Let them go. Where you are going cannot contain everybody. Be intentional. Be very selective in 2024. It's a vast year. But it's also a fast year. There are several aspects of your life, but I want to mention four. I want to draw your attention. Awareness. I want to draw your attention to five. Number one. And we're talking about giant strides. Number one is your faith. When I talk about your faith, I'm speaking about your walk with God. I'm speaking about your relationship with God. I'm speaking about your life, your spiritual life. You must be very intentional about it in 2024 because it takes the strength on the inside to carry the weight on the outside. Matthew chapter 22 and verse number 37. Matthew 22 verse 37. The Bible says that Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Don't practice half-baked Christianity in 2024. The battles are going to be very fierce. Only they that dwell, not they that visit the secret place. Not they that visit the secret place. They that dwell, they that habitually remain, they're the ones that will escape. Because Jesus is coming, the devil is mad, he's on rampage. So you cannot afford to be careless with your spiritual life. With all your heart. All. With all your soul. With all your mind. Don't make God an option. Don't make God a spare tire. Don't make God your extra. Let God be your priority. Call upon the throne before you call upon the phone. In 2024, your faith, your relationship with God. God in 2024 wants to be loved by choice. Not by compulsion. Don't let anybody wind you and wind you and beg you and beg you and beg you to love God. To serve him. 
to do the things that have to do with God. Be very intentional about your spiritual life. Guard it jealously. Don't wake up and the first place you go to will be the Instagram. Mm -mm. Not in 2024. Don't let the last place you will go before you sleep be Facebook. No, call it work. It will not work in 2024. Be so disciplined that you will cultivate a dynamic spiritual life. Be so disciplined that you will invest in your spiritual life. Do not joke with your quiet time. It's not old fashioned. The secrets of champions are in their stories. Read the Bible. Study it. Spend time in God's presence. That's how we win. You cannot bow before God and situations will not bow before you. Storms will come. Winds will blow. Whether your house is built on the rock or is built on the sand. The after effect is how we know your relationship with God. Dig deep. Take root downwards. Decide what you will do in the kingdom this year. Reverend, I told myself that it will be a sin if my kingdom investment this year is 20 million or 40 million. That by the time I compute my offering, my kingdom investment, what I have sub submitted to God in terms of money is just 30 million. Something is wrong. So you would think, oh, she has it somewhere. No. God told me in 2024, stretch. 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 Diola, stretch. You have tarried for too long on this mountain. Stretch. Because the house you plan to build, heaven has already dispatched the angels. They are waiting on the site. You are here complaining that there is no cement. They are waiting. Waiting. Just like those, um, what do you call them, undertakers, waited in Luke chapter number 13. Was it 13? When that young child was going to be buried. No, looks, uh, the, the, the widow of Nain. Luke 7, thank you. Everybody was rejoicing. Nobody remembered to go and tell them that the child had was risen. They were there waiting for his corpse to be buried. Some things wait. Cement is waiting for you there. The people that will help you, they are waiting. But here you are complaining and complaining. Stretch. Do like this. Say your neighbor, stretch. Why do we exercise to stretch our muscles? So you see people at 40, they are bent because they did not learn to stretch. Put pressure on your spiritual muscles. Dear to believe God. Dear. How can you give God 1,000 naira as your offering? You've been giving that three years now. Are you waiting for God to demote you? Which all that he has done for you? Stretch. So to become accountable, you know what I did? I called a few people in church. So I called them kingdom investors. I said, I'm not announcing this. Let's just, because I needed some people to put me on my toes. So I sent to the bank, let's open account agape, kingdom investors. Just be dropping it there. Just be dropping it there. Stretch. Nobody's in the front by mistake. <laughs> Remember, God does not throw up. He lifts up. God is not a blind promoter. He trusts you and then he watches to see what you will do with what he has given to you. Stretch. Stretch. God will never use you as a crook. He may meet you as a crook, 
but he will do something before he uses you. Remember Baba Jacob's story? Until he had a limp. I was preaching in church recently and I was speaking about the limp. We all have it. Where we had encounters with God. Things we did and we're not proud of. We wish we did not. He said, bless me, bless me. If you don't bless me, I will not let you. Well, God said, it's not just about the blessing. It's about the container of the blessing. Can you be trusted? So every time Jacob limps, he remembers, what is your name? My name is Jacob, okay? It's not about just the blessing. So bad that Israelis do not even eat certain parts of animals. We all have our limping points. It's to remind us. Never will I touch another woman that is not my wife again. Never will I do that thing again. Your limping points. You have yours, I have mine. For some of you, it is temper. For some of you, it is tongue. You were so angry one day you misbehaved. Your limping point. Some of you, you can't, there's nobody you cannot tear down. Until God gave you an encounter. Your limping point. Some of you, you are so stingy. You collect change from God. <laughs> As you are dropping your offering, usher. After service. After service. Until God gave you an encounter. You know how much you spent over your car? You know how much you spent on medicine at the hospital? Money that you should have given to God. And he will have blessed. Everybody pays tight. We either pay to God or we pay to the devil. The devil takes it. It's a, it's a tax. It's a spiritual tax. So because somebody typed something on the internet, he say, he say, look at your life and look at the lives of the people that are teaching you. Yeah. Which one do you want your life to look like? Yeah. Whether it's like, eh, is that the kind of life you want? <laughs> just now, that's these pastors. And we're trying, you see, man, because the hair on his head said, is, is, he, is he okay? You see? Tell your neighbor, stretch. In John 21, Jesus asked three times, do you love me? God wants you to love him by choice. Love him. Show him that he's loved. Be crazy about your faith. Your work with God. Be proud as a Christian. Each time you post something on social media, let us see that you have faith in God. Getting late to church should die in 2023. Being a member of this house and not belonging to any department, let it be buried with 2023. Think! What can you do? Even if it's to come and arrange chairs. You don't eat chewing gum and stick it on the chairs in church. You don't allow your child to take a biro and be writing nonsense on church. After service, you don't allow your child to be running here to come and play. These are instruments of worship. God detests it. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. They that honor me, I will honor. But they that despise me, I will hold like you hold your rag. Train your children to behave in church. Be intentional about your faith. Defend it. Stand up. And different. You won't find any Muslim insulting their imams online. Only Christian rascals. Irresponsible lack of home training Christians. Even when Nepal has taken light, let me speak my dialect, the fan will still be rolling. The room may still be cool. It's a matter of time. Everybody, brother, I don't know what this church did for God, but God was just speaking to me as I was coming and I was praying. I told you I, I came from a place of prayer. God said in 2024, he will, quote and unquote, spoil you. 
more than jealous. Sharp, sharp. Me too. I closed my eyes in the prayer. I was just, Father, I'm also a part of them. Uh -uh. The tap that carries the water cannot be coated. I don't know spoil you. My doing, you know. You know when sometimes you sometimes my husband will just give me some and say, darling, they spoil me, oh God. In fact, now I've coined another name for him because he's spoiling his because since I turned 60, he's been spoiling me. So I now call him my king. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Sometimes I'm just on the bed like this, waking up. I'm feeling crisp. He's praying me. Uh, ah, I guess so the SEO. <laughs> Get ready to be spoiled by God. Do you believe it? Yeah. Another thing God said I should tell this house. Psalm 16 verse, verse 6. The lies are falling. How can lies fall? God. You just be hearing, bam, boom. Another one. Messages burns. That's well, you know. <laughs> The lines are falling onto you. HCC. In pleasant places. International appointments. National recognitions. Huh? Things you've been looking for. We start looking for you. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but guard your faith. Develop it, cultivate it, and be a Christian. In case you're not born again, give your heart to Jesus. You're missing. Love him. Serve him. Obey him. Serve him with your time, with your resources, with your attention, with everything. Don't struggle with God in 2024. The devil will never tell you to increase your offering. The devil will never tell you to go and bless somebody. It must be God. Even if it's your emotions, God has a way of blessing it. Obedience. Number two, areas that I want you to focus on as we take giant strides in 2024, your family. Colossians chapter 3, beginning from verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands at it is fit in the Lord. Wives, don't turn off who. When we speak about submission, it's not the African definition of submission. I've told you over and over. It's not subjugation. Mm -mm. It is strength put under control. That's a Bible submission. It's not that a man is slapping you and beating you and messing you up and you say the Bible says I should submit. That's folly. Mm -hmm. Husbands, love your wives. And be not bitter against them. That means that we wives, we can do things that will make you bitter. So be intentional. If you want to go by what comes out of our mouth, you will kill us. <laughs> you are the elderly one. You are the elder. Be here with us. Don't be bitter. Teach us. Help us. Don't love another woman more than you love us. As women, naturally, we have the ministry of suspicion. <laughs> Even when there is nothing. It's our ministry. It's not our fault. Kill him, Basso. I noticed that somebody called you. Women, it's only God that is not allowed to have hypertension. <laughs> but just be here with us. Dwell with us according to knowledge. First Peter 3 tells us that. Verse 7. I think, dwell with us according to knowledge so that your prayer will not be hindered. That's how powerful we are. God is by us in our favor. He knows that sometimes we are petty and mighty at the same time. Women, even me as a woman, I fear women. <clears throat> but God still says, be here with us so that your prayer 21 days, 7 days will not be hindered. You say, ah, but I've been praying. How do you treat your wife? Do you love her? 
First Corinthians 13 tells me how to express love. Do you invest into her? Do you admire her? Do you show it? And if you're a father, love your wife. Your children's mother is a powerful message. Show your children how to treat a woman. Don't let your son grow up thinking that it's only girls that cook. It's a sin. The generation of your children will either bless you or curse you. Raise the boy child. Your child, if you're an African, should be able to make my mind, be able to pound. Don't say it's, it's, it's for guests. And then your son is in the house, in the room, with this thing on his hair. And your girl is outside in the kitchen. You are cutting trouble. Your natural children, the children that your children will marry should be blessing you wherever they are. God bless your mother for raising you well. Let's stop raising only the girl child while we live. Let's take giant strides in that area too. Let your three-year-old pick up his toys. Don't kill yourself. At 40, you are the only one in the kitchen. You will suddenly die. Your child is 12. Your child is 13. The child cannot even prepare pap. The child cannot boil water. The, your children cannot wash their own pants. Even if you have house helps, raise your kids. Because it's not about what you leave for them, it's what you leave in them. Leave things in them. Give them societal values. That's the reason you cannot sit down at table and tear down your pastor. And then get to church and say, hey, Rev. Hey, where is this? You're confusing your children. Ah, is it not the same man that you were talking about? You're confusing their destiny. Your family life. Children, obey your parents in all things. Verse 20. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. Come here. Sit down. Shut up. Fathers, times have changed. The way you were raised is no longer the way. It's called Everything boasts. Everything bars. It won't work. Your child that is six feet. You are jumping up to slap the child. If the child carries you, eh? Let's make our Christianity work at home. Stop provoking your children. Stop shouting on them every time you call. They look at your, they don't want to pick it up. Explain to them. Befriend them. Giant strides. It's not only in preaching and winning souls and conquering territories. We'll do that. But let's bring the reality also home. Be there. I've told you before how my mother-in-law, 110, beautiful lady. She was my number one mentor. She taught me many things. She taught me hard work. She taught me how to earn my own money. She instructed me. You will not believe she's my, she was my mother-in-law. She would say to me, don't trust friends too much. If there are six things in your stomach, say only three, because of the day you will fight. She was a sage. Wisdom. The exam of life, no timetable. There is no delegated invigilator. Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and full. Throughout the earth, the whole earth is looking at the heart. Putting the tape rule around the heart, not the head. So you don't know whether you are not resting an exam. 2024, you cannot afford to be careless. We are an army of occupation. We are in a hurry to occupy. 2024, we entered you in grand style. No mistake. We are looking at every aspect of our lives. We're taking charge. As we're praying, we're investing. We're looking at everything and making God proud. You will not be left behind. Yeah. 22, servants obeying all things, your masters. 
Do it as if it's your own. No? Hmm. Do it as if it's your own. I'm a, I'm a business person. And I see Nigerians. Sometimes you're shaking your head. How can you steal eggs from the poultry and put inside your bra? How can you crack eggs and put in the cooler as if it's the food you brought from? How can you take meat and put in the trash because you are a cleaner, you are a cook at the resort, and then you go and throw it when you are now going home? It's cause you are carrying. Some people are wondering, they pray, they fast. But these things are important. Let's take giant strides in this area. So let's change. Because God told me that in 2024, there will be rewards. He's going to be rewarding people, both good and bad. And he's watching. He's watching. I've spoken. I'm just giving you like carcasses or cost content. You go and sit down and then Reverend will still really explain these things to you. I've spoken about faith, your work with God. I've spoken about your family life. As a woman, if you're not married, it's a different thing. If you're married, you honor your husband. Give him the highest form of honor in your culture. It's important for you to prosper. Don't disrespect him. Don't treat him as if it's nothing. Even if you are better, quote and unquote, financially. John 3.20 A man can receive nothing except it be given to him from above. What is it that you have that you did not receive? And why dwells thou as if thou did not receive it? You didn't choose your background. Your father was the something, something. We thank God for you. But please calm down. And stop using it every time against people. Against your husband. If not that, I waited. Do you think I would have married you? When my, when my father sent me to England, well, eh? <laughs> what about the people that were born in the palace there? They took you there. <laughs> Number three. Friends. I'll soon be done. In 2024, your faith, take giant strides when it comes to that. Your family, uncle, let's see that you really led this family well by the time 2024 is over. Invest in every aspect of that family. You don't need to travel abroad if you think you don't want to. Check your wife and children into one hotel. Go to the resort. Spend quality time with your children. The time is coming when you will look around, they're gone. They are gone. This is the time to be in their lives. Don't be an absentee father. Don't leave school runs only for your wife. Be present in your children's lives. Be there. Let them have good memories about you. Help with house chores. It does not reduce you. It increases God's favor upon your life. Help your wife in the kitchen. Take giant strides in that area too. Pregnancy is not a sickness, but sometimes there is no human word that can explain to you what your pregnant wife is going through. Stop telling her, half it, half it. I cast out demon of weakness. There's no demon of weakness. It's the pregnancy that is taken. You don't know what a woman goes through in delivery. You're just chewing gum everywhere. Uh -uh. You're going to be in the mouth. You're going to push. One man was helping. One man was helping to do the, the swimming pool at home. And he just had a baby. So I said, oh, congratulations. After we had rejoiced and prayed, I said, boy or girl? Said, this girl. Ah! The way he did his mouth. If I were, I would have slapped. I said, what? You are an ingrate. And ungrateful people are evil. I feel like taking this contract away from you. I say, sorry, sorry, sorry. Which one can you produce? You wonder why some prayers and fastings do not get to God. Let's clean up. This is the first night, I guess, of this conference. So let's clean up. 
And then we can push the boundaries. And the devil will come and he will find nothing. For the prince of this world has come and found nothing. And your wife finished dressing up and you will not even comment. Because Reverend told you that you'll be taking the offering. So you are lost in the book of Jeremiah. In the book. <laughs> you don't get to a church. Reverend says, sorry, sorry, I feel late to even take the offering. You see now. <laughs> I don't know. I think God wants us to relax tonight. <laughs> you know, There's joy in the house. Number three, friends. Be very intentional about who you grant access in 2024. When the enemy cannot get you through enemies, he gets you through friends. Say God forbid. If you study the life of David, he was a fantastic man of God. His life is still speaking, but he was a mess in his family life. If you study the life of Jehoshaphat, he was fantastic, but he missed it in relationship. Friendship. There are people that friends have implicated. And we keep telling you, you smell like the company you keep. Who has your ears? And whose ears do you have? Show me your friend and I can predict how 2024 will end accurately because even psychologists have now discovered that you are 20 percent richer or poorer than the seven closest people to you not the people that are your father or mother or wife the people you choose who is your friend who is your closest friend in 2024 you cannot afford to be careless you cannot pick every call you cannot befriend everybody. Where you are going is far. Where you are going is far. You are going to Abuja. This person is going to Agege here. You can't be in the same bus. When a relationship that used to be a blessing has now become a burden, it's time to go home. When they can no longer understand how God is lifting you and they are no longer comfortable. They need explanation for every dress you wear, every wig on your head. And when you don't have time to explain, they pick words. It's time to change. People that love you, they don't mind. People that mind don't love you. I don't owe you every explanation. It's my life. Even in marriage, it's, it's ownership and partnership. I did not understand that because I didn't get married as a pastor. My husband was not a pastor when we got married. We were the best of friends. And then he suddenly came home and said, God had called him. I said, God cannot use people like us. I told him point blank. I said, let's go and join um, Assemblies of God or Church of God Mission. I, I, I told him, to, God cannot use people like us. How? I didn't even understand that God uses people. I, I thought people that God uses, they are, you know, how can God just come and just speak? I said, no way. Oh. Wish us well. Pray for us. It's not easy. We live in the glass house. Particularly those of you that are close to us. You know, you see us in our most vulnerable states. When we are man, then of God. Woman, then of God. You hear us when we shout. When you get here and we, we, just, we just mess up. You see everything. Those of you that are armor bearers, it's not everything you see that you see. Yeah. That's why they call you armor bearer. It's a calling, it's a ministry. Just like we are called to our husbands, 
if we don't see it as a call, we will have given up a long time. Things that Reverend will do, it's his decision, oh, we did not even know anything about it. And some of you will say, I know it's the wife. <laughs> even, I did not even know what you're talking about. Until he gets home to inform me, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to I did not even know. I say, well, I've given me one million, even for his wife. May God forgive you. Amen. I like that, amen. <laughs> Friends, it's sad to see how people try to make you small so they can manage you. There are friends like that. There are friends like that. You have outgrown some relationships. Stop trying to fit in. Stop trying to con is it constrict? Stop trying to constrict yourself. So, so that they will not think that stretch. Blow. Blow it on their faces. Walk in humility. But don't constrict yourself. Some of you, you have outgrown some relationships. Some of you, I'm asking you tonight, you know, Reverend said, get your word out of the word. What are you still doing in that WhatsApp group? Old Girls Association, 1932, said. All they discuss there is nonsense. There are some that are profitable. But this one's nothing. Nothing about kingdom, nothing about blessing people, nothing. What are you still doing there? You have outgrown. Not when you outgrow something. Just like some of you, you have outgrown some, out, some dresses. You will still be managing and patching. Until you sit in church and you say, He's telling you that you have outgrown me. Give it out. You have outgrown some relationships. We're cleaning up because we are fasting now. We're praying now. And this is wisdom for us. So that we'll not pray in vain. There are some relationships that have spiritual embargoes placed on them. Remember, in the book of Luke, chapter 1 or chapter 2, when Jesus was born, Herod said they should kill. That's what we call corporate embargo. For no reason, just because a child was born at that time. Same thing with Moses. There are some groups you should not belong to because there are some corporate embargoes on them. There are some of them. It's husbands that just die, 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 die in that group. Just die, 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 die. Some is cancer, 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 cancer. Some is going down, going down, going down, going down. What are you looking for in that group? Stop wasting the oil on your head. Some people don't need it. Who is your friend? Today is second. So you might want to think and look. Anyone that is not kingdom oriented. Anyone that, any relationship that is not about positivity and possibility. You might want to be winding down. And reduce the time that you spend there. Some of you, I don't know why you are following some people on social media. I can't explain your life. Why you are following them? What for? They diminish you. And some of them you may not know. Because some of them gave their lives to Christ and came to, to explain things that go on. They cast spell. One man, he said he was in 19 cults. He's a man we revere in Ondo State. He got born again and he said this. He said each time somebody was casting the news, either on NTA or, you know, here in Ibadan, he said they will be chanting the person. Your home will break. I will sleep with you. And it will happen. Because those people were not born again. Spiritual things, very real. You can't afford to be careless. Maybe some of you, maybe in my generation, you will know one man called Omoba Jesu. He shared this testimony publicly. He used to be in the occult too. He said one day they were at the beach in Lagos. Holding their meeting in the night. If you don't believe in spiritual warfare, you are daydreaming. You know? We don't magnify the devil, but we are reasonable enough to know that spiritual warfare is real. We're going to do some tomorrow. He said, when they were having their meeting, one man in white, whether the man was born again or not, he does not even know. 
one of these prophets that would go to the, bar, to the beach and be praying. He said the man was just coming. He didn't know in the spirit that they were having a meeting. And the man stepped on them. He said he stood up in the spirit realm and slapped him in his white. And the man, he said, I didn't know whether I was born again. The man just shouted, Jesus! He said when that word came out of his mouth, he noticed that fire came with it. And for the first time, they couldn't finish their meeting. That's one of the reasons why he began to inquire. Is there any higher power? I think the man is still alive. Is there any higher power? That's how he got born again. Spiritual things are very real. It's the truth. So you don't even know. You think because your mind is like this, everybody is like that. You sit anyhow. You eat in anybody's house. You drink, you drop your coke, you drink. We're not saying that everybody is enemy. I'm not in that kind of a church. But I'm telling you the balance. Don't be so trusting to be careless. In 2024. Number four. I have two more. Your finance. Let's take giant strides as far as our financial life is concerned. And I want to spend a few minutes there. Because I have the authority and I have the wither without or we are without to teach you on that. In 2024, you must do three things about your money. Make money. Manage money. Multiply money. And I want to explain. In 2024, you must make money. Ask God for wisdom as we are fasting in this house. For the grace. Bishop, well, he's a bishop now. <laughs> Quoted in the scripture. Deuteronomy 8:18. There's a dimension of financial empowerment that comes from God. You must know how to make money. You cannot just sit down year in, year out, praying. Fasting and not making. I have noticed, Pastor, that if you are poor, you will sin more. You know, I've been in the two worlds, so I understand what I'm saying. You will always be angry. <laughs> what, 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 what? Who else this means? <laughs> Who? Ah, where's the bread we bought yesterday? Your voice... You will not believe that you can preach like that. Poverty is bad. Ah, what happened? You want to keep me in this house? How much did Nepa? Huh? <laughs> Nepa bill. This one. That, you will always be agitated. Poverty is bad. I curse it in your life. Yeah. When you see wealthy people and they make a mistake, hey. By splashing water on you. Mm. Particularly if you have if you knew them before, you were mates. Hey, is it because you are not a nurse? Is it because? Is it because when you are poor, you sin more? You misinterpret actions. People that are just playing with you. Your face, your body language will be changing. When you see people wear what you want, you'll be trying to find fault. If they are now singing, they quite say, oh, don't you move. Don't you move. <laughs> it's not moving. It's not moving. Everybody's moving like this. It's moving like that. You will shall be looking for fault. <laughs> Poverty is a bastard. Make money. It is God's counsel. Money is good. Think and grow rich. There are books on your inside. Ideas on your inside. In 2024, the kingdom needs the money. You can't just sit down and say until, until somebody blesses you, until your husband gives you money. Think. Make investment. Last year, I told you. You can't be on Facebook every day and not have their shares. When you are sleeping, let money be growing for you. 
Look at unbelievers. Some of them don't even pray like we do. They will chop this life, and then on their deathbed, they will not give their lives to Jesus. <laughs> you see? How do I know? Reverend, we know that scripture. The Bible says that in the morning, he found some people loitering. He employed them. In the afternoon, he employed them. In the evening, he employed them. <laughs> when he now paid. Matthew 20. This is your bishop. It's a war kids up. <laughs> My boy, encyclopedia. Matthew 20. Thank you. When he now paid everybody equally. Uh -uh. He said, how? They were complaining. Jesus said, why is your eye evil? Because I'm good. Sometimes I just go online. I look at some women. Their bags, the way they tie their scarf, the gold in the bathroom, and I'm envisioning. We chop this life. And we chop heaven. Instead of criticizing them. Because you can't attract what you attack. Before God gave us this little change in our pocket, my driver is there. He's been driving me for 19 years. When our cars were, I would say, give him right off. We let that Range Rover go. Say, mommy, but I'll allow no, give him. Because when the car notices that I will respect it, it will come to me. Yeah. So what is struggling, struggling? Because your, your car is smoking. Go, oh, Lord, Dad, and you are not struggling with. <laughs> you are struggling with. And the car is saying, ah. Uh, this GLE, if I come to the house, this, this are, you don't even know that spiritual, these are laws. They are laws. Fasting is good. Praying is good. I told you this is what I do. But these things, you must put them in place while you fast, while you enter into a new year. Honor what you want. So into the life of somebody that looks like your future. Someone that has done 10 times what you are trying to do. Find a way to serve them. That's how I live my life. They don't need to say thank you. From my children that are working in bank, ah, I get hey, account details of all these babas. He did for my phone. I'm transferring. Well, that is small. They may not even realize because some people have given them 400 and something thousand, million something. My own 25,000, God sees it. Look for people that have pictures of your future and find a way to serve them. Some of them will come to your shop. You will even collect, you will overbuild them. This is my opportunity. Oh, ah, Rev came in today. Hey, Mama D came in today. <laughs> and you know it's 3,000 you said those things. <laughs> it's 3,455 naira. <laughs> and you wonder why you are not rising. Make money. Number two, manage money. Manage it. Money stays where it is honored. Manage money. You can't buy everything you see. You can't eat everything. From chewing gum to chocolate, from ice cream to this, if somebody blesses you with 50,000, hey, you are jumping. Let's go to KFC. That's not how to live. You don't find wealthy people behave that way. You save. You tithe to God. You tithe to yourself. You invest. Go to one bush and buy one land there. It will become something heavy later. Land is even better than house. In some places. Invest. Who says as a single person you cannot own land? Or own house. Or houses or lands. When we were growing up, that was when we were waiting. Don't buy it so that somebody will marry you. These days, men are looking for landowners. <laughs> car owners. I saw one post, don't marry a poor woman. Ah, I shook my head. I said, life to change. <laughs> May God give you understanding. Yeah. Manage it. You don't have to wear what they are wearing. Don't pattern your life. And because of that, you want to kill yourself. Some of them use credit cards. Some of them bought it on credit. When you are still trying to, 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 to pay for that yellow, they have bought another green. You kill yourself. Who are you competing with? And finally, fitness. 
faith family friends finance in 2024 fitness prevention is better than kill so that you will not need to pray some prayers some of you don't even know let me start with this some of you don't even know that when we dance in church we are honoring god but we are also helping ourselves you're exercising any little thing you are sitting the latest research now says that the greatest enemy of man is now the chair you sit for two hours you don't stand up you have smoked cigarette go and google it that's the latest research now sometimes leave the elevator I was going to school a few days ago because I go to school in Georgia Solidary just to read. I told my driver, just park. When you get to that land about park, he said, Mommy, what? I said, be going. Go. I tried. At 61, in a few days I'll be 61. I still do five kilometers. My husband is 70, he still does his own. That's what we do. You must be fit. You cannot be dragging at 31. Mumba, my boy, I will beat you. <laughs> this, this, you know, I was born in the Bado, sorry. So when I want to preach this kind of message, you know, stomach is big, bum bum is big, everything is big, leg is big. I know some of you are fat naturally. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about health. I'm talking about fitness. One little thing like this, you are snoring. <laughs> Mumba, I'm coming, I'm coming. There are prayers you don't need to pray. Do you know that fasting is helpful? Because if not that reverend declared this fasting, some of you, your intestines have not rested this year. <laughs> the intestines are complaining. You eat and eat and eat. Fasting is helpful. And some people will still be dodging it. It's for your good. I say, I prayed and I fasted. And it still happened. This is it. I have brought the onions, the tomatoes, the this. Let's cook this soup for 2024. This is it. Joy makes you fit. There are 1,001 reasons why you should not be happy. Do we still find them? It's a choice. Just choose to be happy. One man left you. Because of that, you want to kill yourself. If you kill yourself, the children will still live. The man will remarry. It will even shock you. Your husband committed adultery. Because of that, you will not eat again. The girl that he slept with is waiting for you to die. So choose. No way. You will not be a stepmother to my children. Choose. I've labored in this house. On my children's wedding day, I will stand by the man. I learned from one woman. She got born again eventually. She said her husband married 24 wives and had 36 children that the man will come to her she was old and say um one woman just gave birth in the jebu for me tomorrow is the naming ceremony you are going with me she said she will come she will go when they get there the man will collect the child and give and say help me check show Jomi. help me check <laughs> This life. I did not watch this on television. Happened. I was. It was her birthday. I was the chair person. She turned to me. She said, "Mama, God helped me to make monogamy out of polygamy." When the Baba died, I was there at Saint David's Church, Mama did what do you call this? A mabu. Heart shape. She put it there. There you are. You are my first love. You are. I'm looking at her one eye. A man that married 23 wives after you. You see. You know what? She lived in England before. She, she said, I chose. That's his life. This is my life. I will enjoy. And he there's something. I remember that woman. I say, what have you gone through? <laughs> One sister wants to marry your husband. That's why you want to kill yourself. 
This fasting will profit you. It is tagged seven days of glory. Your life will be glorious. We are preparing this to you. Tomorrow, we are dealing with cobwebs. We are praying 31 prayers. I will see you at the top. Yeah. <laughs>